Let's cap it off on the shakeup in Parliament and the different uh, parties that have now taken over, finance, uh, among others. Uh, let me just walk you through some of them as I have them here. So we know, for example, that um, Kweku Kwating is said to have rejected uh, that new role as ranking on the Economy Committee uh, chaired by an NDC MP. And the ranking on that committee uh, now being Amapoma Bwating as uh, put forward. Then Mines and Energy, uh, now only the Energy Committee with no responsibility for mines, which will now be taken care of uh, by the Committee on Lands and Natural Resources. The ranking uh, on that committee is now Al Hassan Suini. We spoke to him a short while uh, earlier. Then you have Samuel Okujatu Ablakwa, Chairman of the Government Assurance uh, Committee. He used to be ranking on the Foreign Affairs Committee, as we know. And the ranking there on the Foreign Affairs Committee is now Dr. Abdul Rashid uh, Pelpu. It goes on and on. Uh, I'll start with you, Samuel Bing. The shakeup, the relevance of the shakeup at this time in uh, the dying embers of the eighth parliament, how do you relate to it? Well, first of all, it is important. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Please go ahead. Right. First of all, it is important to note that um, this has come about as a result of the changes to the standing orders of, of Parliament, right? Um, Parliament adopted new standing orders uh, at the dying members of last year. And from the beginning of this year, they've been applying these new standing orders. These standing orders require some changes to committees, the nomenclature of the committee, the functions of the committee, but also to... Uh, Um, and, and also to the issues around how many members of parliament make up each one of these committees. And so naturally, it was expected that the uh, committee on selection, which is the committee that uh, ch chaired by uh, the right honorable speaker, uh, by the standing orders of parliament, that is responsible for getting the two sides to agree on who and who becomes members of their respective, members from their respective caucuses being on committees get to do their work and announce new committees. So uh, uh, the timing, yes, is quite interesting, but it's, it's, it's a requirement from the new standing orders, right? That's the first point. The second point is that these new committee arrangements is also very progressive. In fact, it is in line with modern trends so far as parliamentary practice and parliamentary work is concerned. What do I mean by that? You know, we had an instance in the past where only uh, the subsidiary legislation committee, public accounts committee, you know, uh, chaired by the minority in parliament uh, or the, the party that has not formed the government, you know, in, in, in parliament. The rest are all chaired by parties that are formed government. And we've noticed from parliamentary practice the world over that this is not very uh, healthy uh, for purpose of oversight, for purpose of accountability, for purpose of transparency. And so parliament of Ghana has transformed this greatly and has introduced instances where there are specific committees that will be chaired by the party that forms the government for very good reason, you know, I mean, uh, committees that are dealing with issues of national security for. Foreign you, you will understand why committees that are dealing with national security, foreign affairs and co will be chaired by the party in government. But you'll also understand why committees like uh, the ones that are dealing with uh, government assurances, you know, uh, subsidiary legislation, uh, 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 public accounts committee and the likes will be compulsorily chaired by the, the, the party or the caucus that is not forming government. And then the rest of them will be shared among the caucuses, majority, minority, in equal number or number proportionate to the numbers that they have in parliament. So with this hang, you're almost having a 50-50 uh, situation of committees chaired in parliament. So that's also a very good thing. Uh, so these are the backgrounds to why this has happened. And now, of course, the numbers have also reduced. You had committees that had almost 30 members, 24, 27. It made work very, very difficult. Now it's been reduced by way of how many members can make up a committee, but also the number of committees generally have gone up because some committees were too large. They needed to be split and all of you. Some of the names that have come up and some of the fallouts, rather, for me, are the interesting aspects of this. A few weeks ago, I had indicated 
you know, uh, uh, in, in one of the comments I sent to Samson's news file program, how uh, people like uh, the Honorable Party as Finance Committee Chair must be protected by all of us by using our voices. Because if you saw the work that the committee was doing, and sometimes not all of these things came out in the public domain, because yes, you can understand why for political reasons, some of these things must be dealt with internally. How a committee that is chaired by a member of parliament who is in the majority, in the ruling party, blocks tax exemptions because he as chairman, together with his other members, thinks that this is not in the best interest of the nation, right? And ask the ministry to take these things back, many of them, right? Of course, you don't expect people to be very happy with these things. And for us, this is the backstory, really, for taking people like Wekukati out of a committee of finance and saying that he's going to, you know, uh, work in economy. I would have been surprised if he had, if he had, if he had accepted that. By the way, you, you get the point. So, so from so where you said it was right, it was right for him to reject it. Where... Sorry. So from where you said it was right for him to reject it. Oh, absolutely. Look, we must start getting to the point where committee membership, leadership on committees, does not become a, a tool in the hands of the leadership of caucuses to either punish people or reward people who, th who they think are loyalists, not in the interest, not in their overall national interest. And we must start speaking out on things like this, in my opinion. Of course, uh, one of the very exciting things that has happened with this shakeup is having Mr. Kujetua Blackwa as chairperson of G Committee on Government Assurances. Uh, we've realized how that particular committee, depending on who is leading it, can be a very useful tool or a very useless committee, you know, and, and we've seen how useless it could be, you know, in, in, in some recent past. And so, you know, uh, we would expect a lot from that particular committee, although it will be short-lived, they just have about uh, six months, but to be able to make sure that the promises that government makes on the floor of parliament, the promises that parliamentary officials make on the floor of parliament, somebody or a committee is holding them accountable to the timelines, the deadlines, and making sure that they are living up to those expectations is also very exciting. But this entire shakeup was expected to happen because of the changes in the standing orders. Right. Uh, Dr. John Osai Kwapong, your take on that would be the shakeup. And that's how we're going to end. Yeah. So I recall that when the uh, standing, the changes to the standing orders. And, 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 and uh, Dr. John Osai Kwapong, please hold for me. Let, let me let go sure. of. Um, Sami Obeng, uh, I know you have to move on to other things. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we're grateful, and uh, I wish you the my best. My pleasure, my pleasure always. Right. That is Sami Obeng. He's with the Parliamentary Network Africa. Back to you, Dr. Osai Kwapo. Thank you very much. So I recall last year when uh, the proposed changes to the standing orders uh, was made public, um, I was um, very excited about it um, because um, I think we often hear uh, this public narrative that uh, we have a very strong executive, parliament is weak, parliament doesn't really check uh, the executive as much as uh, it, it can. And my counter argument was always that um, the executive is only as strong as parliament makes it, right? That if parliament would flex its muscles sometimes, that it could really, uh, you know, uh, improve its, its, its oversight. So for me, the first thing for me is the prospect of greater oversight um, that uh, that I see. Because again, and I always go back to um, Afrobarometer, but if you go to Afrobarometer, you see the sentiment of Ghanaians implicitly wanting greater um, oversight um, of the of the executive. Uh, you, um, in, you, for example, in, in 2012, only 8% felt or perceived that the president often or always ignores parliament. Um, and then it's grown to 33% in the most recent Afrobarometer, right? So if you look at some of the committees that are now going to be chaired by um, the, the minority party in this or subsequent uh, parliament, at least you can have some assurance that oversight of the executive uh, will, be, uh, will be improved. I also think that you are going to see a much stronger hand giving to the minority party in the, uh, in the conduct of the affairs of, of parliament. Again, we often tend to say that 
the minority would have its say, but the majority would have uh, its way. But with some of these reconfigurations, I think it would be more than just the minority having its say, but the minority would have an impactful say in the uh, in the affairs you know, of parliament as it works with its uh, majority counterpart. So for me, the prospect of the greater oversight um, and then the prospect of a stronger uh, hand of minority in the conduct of parliamentary affairs beyond even just this parliament, I think it's, it, it's good. Um, public perceptions of parliament is not the best. If you look at the most recent Afrobarometer, it's one of the institutions with the lowest approval uh, rating when it comes to performance. Um, and then lowest, you know, the perceptions of corruption is not great. Uh, trust is low as well. So hopefully this shakeup, as time progresses, would help improve how Ghanaian citizens have come to perceive uh, the, uh, the, my, the parliament as an institution. Real quick, the one challenge, though, that I foresee would always be, um, you know, the issue of partisanship. Uh, when, you know, when the hand of the minority is strengthened, I think one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that in their eagerness to hold the executive accountable, which, you know, is from a different political party, that there is not um, an overreach, right? Uh, you have to walk that fine line between holding the executive accountable, ensuring greater oversight, and not overreaching in such a way that it can potentially cause political gridlock. Because once the majority starts to sense that on some of these committees that are now being chaired um, by members of the minority, and they sense that overreach, they may want to then also shield um, you know, their party or the executive that is you know, formed by its party. And that can cause you know, further political gridlock. But overall, I think it is good for the institution. Um, it would strengthen parliament. And my hope is that it would improve public perceptions um, of the work that parliament does.